Hi everyone, I am Piyush and in this video I'll be breaking down typecasting in Java. I'll keep things straightforward so you'll understand how and when to use typecasting in your Java programs. So what is typecasting? Imagine you have a big box and you want to put a small toy car inside. So you can directly fit the car into the box, right? But what if you have a big toy truck? You can't fit it directly into the box, right? So you need to somehow make it smaller to fit into the box. And this is essentially what typecasting does in Java. So in programming terms, Typecasting is converting one data type to another. For example, converting an integer to a double or a double to an integer. So why do we need typecasting? So let's go back to our toy box analogy. So first is implicit typecasting or we can say the easy fit. Remember when we put the small toy car into the big box, it fits without any trouble. And this is similar to implicit typecasting in Java. It happens automatically when you try to fit a smaller data type into a larger one. For example, an int, which is a whole number, can easily fit into a double, which is a number with decimals, because a double can hold more piece of information. And second, we have explicit typecasting, which is, uh, we can also say it, the tight squeeze. Okay, but what about if you're trying to fit the big toy truck into the small toy car box? You can't do it directly, right? You need to make the truck smaller, which is not practically possible in the real world, but definitely possible in the world of programming. So in explicit typecasting in Java, you are manually trying to fit a larger data type into a smaller one. However, you have to be careful with explicit typecasting. So just like squeezing the toy truck might damage it, converting a double which can contain decimals to an integer which cannot contain decimals, it can lose some piece of information. And the decimal part gets cut off. Or in other words, you lose some information which you don't really need. So to differentiate, implicit typecasting is automatically Fitting a smaller data type into a larger one, like a toy car into a big box, it works fine with no data loss. And the second is explicit typecasting, or it means manually trying to fit a larger data type into a smaller one, like a bigger toy truck into a car box. But be careful, you might lose some data. So let's see all this in action. So far we are just discussing theory. Let us move to action. So I'll go to Eclipse. Here is my piece of code. I have an integer variable which contains this value as 100 and the data type is integer. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I'm storing this integer variable into this double variable. So it means I'm actually trying to put my value, this value inside this double value. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll click on save and I'll simply click on the run button and see. I get this output as 100.0. Now, what is really happening is this is actually a perfect example of implicit typecasting and it is actually safe. Okay, so we just put this value integer into this double value. So let's see an example of explicit typecasting now. It means we are trying to fit a bigger toy truck into a car box. So unlike the previous example like this, it is not going to be automatic. It requires manual intervention because it can lead to some data loss. Here's an example. What I'll do, I'll simply comment this code. Okay, and I'll type another piece of code. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll write double my double equal to 9.78 which contains some decimal digits i'll put semicolon and then i'll do int my int which is in lower camel casing format and then i'll do int and then followed by my double with a semicolon and then what i'll do i'll do sys out control space hit enter and i'll do my int with a semicolon perfect i'll save this code so in this example my double is a variable of type double and we explicitly cast it to an int using this. So this is an example of explicit typecasting wherein we are typecasting our double variable into an integer variable using this. Okay, so this what will happen is it will truncate the decimal part, this decimal part as the integer data type only stores whole numbers resulting in my int storing only this value as 9 and all this value after this fraction or we can say decimal is going to be lost. So we can simply say we are going to have some data loss here. Let me run this code and see what happens. I'll save it, click on the run button and I get this output as 9. It means it has indeed stored or basically converted this value which is 9.78 into this but after this data loss of 0.78. Alright, so I'll go back to my whiteboard. So there are some important points which we need to consider. First, you need to be cautious with explicit typecasting as you might lose data, as I've just shown you. Imagine you have a precise measurement of distance in kilometers 
and it might contain decimals so you will store this data in double data type or in other words it's a double value so if you forcefully convert this to an integer which is a number of whole kilometers you will lose the decimal part which represents the meters for example 3.7 kilometers which is a double value would become just 3 kilometers losing the 700 meters as it is now an integer value and this loss of information can affect calculations or comparisons so you want to be very careful with explicit type casting as it is not really safe you have to be careful second you can cast between compatible data types only for example you can't cast a string to an integer directly think of data types as different containers you can pour water from a smaller container like an int into a bigger container for juice which is a long but you can't pour juice from the bigger container back into a smaller container without spilling or we can say causing errors okay i'll switch to eclipse and we'll see this particular thing in action i'll comment out this code as well i'll look command and forward slash oh like i'll select this again i'll do command slash to comment out my code all right so i'll do string and then i'll do age as string as my variable name and i'll store a string value which is 30 so whatever i'm storing within these double quotes is actually a string so what i'll do i'll create another variable called int and i'm trying to typecast this value into an integer variable so i'll do age as string semicolon okay so what is going to happen if i'll just bring my mouse i'm getting this error so it clearly says cannot cast from string to integer it means i cannot convert this string value of 30 into an integer even though it looks like an integer but it is not it is actually a string so what i just saw is i saw a compilation error thrown by java because you cannot directly cast a string to an int so strings and integers are fundamentally different data types and we cannot cast string to an integer like this so to correctly convert a string to an integer you should actually use something called as integer dot pass int so i'll show you firstly i'll comment out this line and then i'll do like this int age equal to integer dot pass int and here i'll pass age as string as my variable followed by a semicolon and then if i'll do sys out i'll do control space hit enter as my shortcut and then if i'll try to print age so what we'll do is let me just run this piece of code first i get this output as 30 so this string value 30 is now converted to an integer value 30 using integer dot percent i'll not go deeper into integer and percent at this moment as we'll be covering them in detail in our later videos but for now just understand that integer is a wrapper class in java and this parse int is a method inside this class that takes a string as an input and attempts to convert it into an integer value. And this method is very commonly used when working with Selenium with Java. Okay, so by understanding these points, you can avoid unexpected results and errors in your Java programs. So that's it for this video. In case you haven't check out, checked out my earlier videos, I would highly recommend you to watch them as all these videos are structured and it's a full-fledged Java course from scratch. All these videos also come with detailed notes which you can refer to, refresh on the topics and I'm pretty sure you'll love them and feel free to download them. And here's a playlist that I've created specifically for you and I'll recommend you to access and bookmark it in your browser for easy access. It has all these videos in all the structured format. And I sincerely hope you have liked this video. Please like it if you found it valuable. It gives me happiness to see that people are actually getting value from my effort. Also, this actually helps this video to rank higher as per the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing for more technical content. And if you are really liking my teaching style, please do share it on LinkedIn or with your friends and stay tuned and happy learning. Piyush Gupta, your virtual coach, signing off.